Tražio sam da napravi taj udisaj preda mnom. Zvuk je imao dodirnih tačaka, stihim, ha, kako ljudi ispuste kad se prekasno sjete da su zaboravili ponijeti neku važnu stvar. Ugrabio bi nešto sna tek pred jutro, kad bi tramvaj zaklopparali, a obližnje saobraćajnice osvojilo brujanje automobila zarobljenih u gužvi. Na TV-u je pogledao dokumentarac o grinjama. Čim bi legao da spava, te sićušne nametnike nije mogao izbiti iz glave. Spopadala ga je misao da se magnito množe u njegovom jastuku. Preplavio bi ga užas. Hrle prema njemu, a ima ih milijarda. Od njihovog masovnog šuškanja ledi mu se krv u žilama. Raspoređuju se u vojne formacije pod komandom puno krupnih, vrhovnih grinja koji umiju i da govore, da huškaju. Kao odbrambenu mjeru naslagao bi nekoliko čistih presvlaka na jastuk, inače ne bi mogao oka sklopiti. U dućanu ljekobilja i organske hrane obskrbio bi se vrećicama lavande i poredao ih na ormarić kod uzglavlja. Prije počinka bi ih ispritiskao prstima da puste aromu. Pomagalo je. Bolje je spavao. Mada ni blizu kao prije, kada su ga iz popodnevnog kunjanja izvlačili mirisi kolača koje bi Livija na povratku s posla kupila u najizvikanijoj slastičarni u gradu. Ali ona je sada iščezla iz njegovog života, a njegova lađa je, uprko slavandi, zalazila u sve tješnje i sjenovitije moreuze. Kako je datum mačkovog upokojenja stario, nesanica se jeste povlačila. Ipak postoji milion drugih načina da čovjeku ne bude dobro. Zbog čega se preporučuje stalna borba. A on se prepuštao. Njegov sudoper je sa svim tim neopranim suđem mogao stati rame uz rame s mikrobiološkim laboratorijem znanstvenika koji je izgubio i podršku i razum. Stano mu se širio miris riže kuhane s puterom i vegetom. Osjećalo se i na nagorilu hranu. Ponekad bi usred razgovora, sjedeći na kauču, obgrlio noge i uklještio glavu između koljena. Evo meni van zemaljca, pomišljao sam, koji bi se svakog časa mogao preobraziti u svoj nekadašnji oblik, u veliko jaje obloženo kamenim oklopom. Povjerio mi se odnedavno da svako jutro po buđenju odleži četvrt sata na leđima, sklopljenih kapaka, s jakom erekcijom. U tim momentima izvjesni sistemi u mozgu mu zakažu i on ne može odoljeti želji da sanjari kako Nina Kalašnikov. Okružuje ga bijela praznina koja mu se umiljava, a on stoji u zgrčanoj pozi koju je u stvarnosti nemoguće održati, što zbog zakona gravitacije, što zbog mišićnog napora. Pomicanjem ručice na mehanizmu ubacuje metak u cijev. Oblije ga zadovoljstvo. Već repetiranu pušku iznova repetira, što je izvedivo jedino u mašti. To ponovi još mnogo puta, slušajući unutrašnjim uhom, Škljoca je sprave za ubijanje. Puška postaje sve napetija. Hrpa metaka se nagurava u ležište cijevi. A on se osjeća sve moćnijim zbog neizmjerne potencijalne energije koja se akumulira u oružju. Taj proces bi u zreloj fazi nastavio da se odvija na autopilotu. Misli o repetiranju su samostalno navirale. Grof se pozvao na primjer Plera koji s izgrebanog CD-a iščitava jednu te istu muzičku sekvencu. Čest slučaj na domaćim radiostanicama u ono doba. Ali jedno je muzika koja preskače, korigovao se, a drugo škljoca je puške. Škljoca je čista moć, seks. Par sekundi tišine, a zatim nabaci izazivački. Šta buljiš u mene, tako oči moje plave. I ti bi malo, ha? So, guten Abend, willkommen zur äh, nächsten Lesung von unserem Lesezyklus Tamistad. 
Äh, Tamistat ist eine Wortschöpfung aus Tamistat und Amistat und äh, bezeichnet eine, äh, die zensurierte Literatur äh, aus Sowjetunion und Osteuropa, die im Westen während des Kalten Krieges publiziert wurde. Das Wort Amistad bedeutet Freundschaft und Zuneigung. Das Projekt Tamistad nimmt diesen Neologismus als Leitfaden und fokussiert damit auf die Literatur, die außerhalb Österreichs äh, herausgegeben wurde, aber doch einen Bezug auf Menschen und ihre Lebenswelten in Österreich hat. Ähm, wir haben zwei Zyklen. Äh, jetzt sind wir äh, bei Zyklus Niemandsland und Fokus ist auf äh, Autorinnen aus Bosnien und Herzegowina. Und der zweite Zyklus, äh, Norma, äh, Nomad ne Nomad, äh, ist den Autorinnen äh, aus anderen kulturellen Kreisen und Kontexten äh, gewidmet. Das Projekt Tamistad ist eine Fortsetzung bzw. Weiterentwicklung der vorherigen äh, literarischen Projekte Dithirams und wird in der Zeitspanne von Oktober 21 bis Dezember 23 durchgeführt. Die Projektidee enthält die Lesungen als einen wichtigen performativen Projektteil, wird aber auch durch die geplanten Artist Talks erweitert. So, now I'll say all of this in English again. Uh, so, uh, welcome to our uh, reading cycles called Tamistad. Tamistad is a blending of words Tamistad and Amistad. So, Tamistad refers to the censored literature from Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, published in the uh, West during the Cold War, and the uh, Spanish word Amistad means friendship. Austria, its cosmopolitan capital of Vienna in particular, is home to many people from other countries. Their connections and relations with the countries of uh, their origin are, um, have to be examined through the uh, also um, optics of art and culture. At the same time, literature from other parts of the world uh, is of great significance for the cultural growth of Austrians. The goal of the project Tamistad is to support this two-way relation, facilitate and shape intercultural literary exchange, as well as to make physical borders uh, permeable through a literature and encourage the audience to step over them. In this regard, it's important that the exchange does not take place within a single cultural space, but to venture across its boundaries. Therefore, we would like to invite authors from different parts of the world who are willing to be able to, uh, willing and able to contribute to the exchange in the spirit of global good neighborhood. So this project uh, uh, is, is, uh, has two cycles, each with a particular focal point. Now we are um, in the cycle titled uh, No Man's Land, which is uh, dedicated to the authors from Bosnia and Herzegovina. The second cycle, Nomad ne Nomad, focuses on authors from other cultural contexts. So the Tamstad series of readings is a continuation of further or further development of Dittiram's previous literary projects and the project idea revolves around the readings, but will also be broadened by the planned artist talks to facilitate artistic and cultural exchange. So, our guests tonight are Nihad Hasanovic, who you already heard uh, reading the uh, uh, part uh, from his work, which I will uh, later read in English, and uh, the translator Mirza Puric. So, I'll tell you something about Nihad, but before that, I will just shortly greet everybody in uh, Bosnian, Croatian, and Serbian. So, dobro večer, dobro došli. Um, nadam se da je ovo objašnjenje o Tamistadu na njemačkom ili na engleskom da bilo dovoljno da svi shvate, zato to neću ponavljati na našem, ali eto, red je da vas pozdravimo, s obzirom da nam je autor iz Bosne i Hercegovine, pa onda ja, da pozdravimo se... sviju i na našem jeziku. Ja. Uh, koliko, koliko se ja varam ili mi ovdje svi razumijemo BCS, ima li uopće smisla u rad na engleskom ili njemačkom? <laughs> ima. 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 Alright. <laughs> So, now let me tell something about <laughs> Nihad in English and about you in English. Okay, so Nihad Hasanovic was born in 1974 in Bihać, Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. He studied French language and literature at Faculty of Philosophy, University of Sarajevo. He has published the plays Podigni Visoko Baklju, Rise High the Torch, uh, and Zaista, really. A collection of short prose, 
kad su narodi nestali, when people disappeared, and also novels o roštilju i raznim smetnjama, on barbecue and sundry disorders, and čovjek iz podruma, the basement man, and also lucky pogon, light drive. Uh, he has also published poems, stories, essays, and translations, mostly from French and Spanish, but also from English, in different literary magazines, both printed and online. He has translated into Bosnian uh, different uh, novels. Uh, you can also, I will read this and you can also read it, because I don't think it makes sense that I read all of this now. But anyways, he's a very fluent translator. Prolific translator <laughs> and writer, yes. Exactly. He lives in Sarajevo and writes uh, articles for the web portal Nomad. Mirza Puric is a literary translator, most recently of Faruk Shehic Under Pressure, and in contrastation with Ellen Elias Bursac of Milan Kojegovic, Inshallah Madonna, Inshallah. His work has appeared in uh, different literary magazines online and elsewhere. Well, mostly, m most recently of Marko Pogacar's Neon South, we will host. We will be hosting Marco later this year here, and we will we will present that book. I'm mega chuffed about it. I'm really excited. And we also have there uh, some of Nihad's books. So later on, whoever is interested, oh, yeah. please take one of these beauties home, so Nihad doesn't have to take them back to Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and now I give word to Mirza. Right. Thank you. This little performance of yours, Nihad, is, is this a metaphor of writing as such, you know, like a cosmetic voice reading into darkness, into void, like, like William Blake's voice of one crying in the mm -hmm. wilderness, if that makes sense? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it depends on the, on the point of view of the angle. Uh, well, when you say the darkness, the wilderness, the, what does it mean? Yeah. In what sense? Like uh, what context, uh, social context, uh, the position of an uh, individual in the society, or you can think about when you say darkness, you can think about, uh, for example, the darkness of soul or the subconsciousness or the intuitive uh, level of your mind. So speaking from your darkness, speaking from a kind of darkness, it can mean that you can, uh, uh, you speak about, uh, I don't know, the bottom of your mind, something that you cannot uh, maybe express in an ordinary life, everyday life. Um, but uh, I don't know, writing for me is not, maybe it can sound uh, very uh, pessimistic in a way. For me, in writing, there is all, all, always kind of joy and happiness. And given that I live in a society uh, which hasn't been so happy, it's sometimes it's uh, <laughs> uh, last 30 years, uh, it's not that easy to find this uh, baseline happiness, uh, which I recognize among the people who live in happier countries like in the West or maybe in the States or I don't know uh, some parts of Asia. Uh, for us it's a struggle to find this uh, may, maybe even mediocre mediocre happiness mm -hmm. and uh, you fight for this happiness every every time and try to introduce it in my uh, literature but uh, it is never uh, uh, um, how to say um, uh, not instinctive. Uh, it's uh, it's something that you just uh, uh, you had to fight for it to experience. And maybe in Light Drive, the, the third novel, I was looking for it. In the first novel uh, on the barbecue and sundry disorders disruptions, uh, I was I, I I was younger. I was younger. Maybe um, okay. I was also. Under, it was maybe written. It, it was written in, at the beginning of the 2000s. So mm. uh, I was under a deeper influence of, of the war war experience. But on the other hand, I was uh, in my early 30s when I was writing, and I think I was my my body was uh, was um, more like uh, prone to dancing, to be happy, to express it. And now I'm, I'm getting older. Uh, it's more difficult. To find that level of joy, of game, of uh, 
not to be just, I don't know, like Baudelarian <laughs> kind of writer or William Bla Blakian. Mm -hmm. There's more, more uh, something like uh, Joyful Life, uh, which is expressed in Walt Whitman's poems, for example, uh, and other, other writers and poets. That's what I'm, I, I, I've been always looking for. Um, I was, I was running for, I was all the time, I've been running from the experience of war, but it, it, it persecutes, it, yeah, it has been persecuting me. Yeah. yeah, this is a brilliant answer to yeah. a really jumbled up question. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I had in mind is, you know, it, are you people hurt? Do you, do you feel that, that, that you have, you know, the audience's ear, as it were, you know, do you feel that, that, that what you do has some weight when you, when you, you know, release it out in, into the world, you know, is, is that... Is there any... Like delivery of a child, like, something <laughs> like that. No, 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 I mean, the, 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 the impact of it, you know, like social, cultural, is it narcissistic to think that, you know, when you write something and you just put it out, that it will make a difference? Does it make difference ever? Uh-huh. Uh, but I, I, I belong to those people who believe that, okay, everything, nothing is static, even if it... If it seems to be static, it's dynamic. Everything moves. Molecules, atoms, there is al always quantum uh, reactions between and nothing is just uh, frozen. It's just uh, an appearance. It's, uh, it's an illusion. Uh, so even if you write a book, it influences in a way something. So the quantity, the, the, the strength of this influence is a question. So maybe I know Marx, capital, influenced a lot uh, societies and uh, other books, uh, I don't know, um, uh, Arabic Nights, for example, uh, in, a, in a different way. Um, I think my book, but also books uh, of other writers, if they are read, they influence those people and those people influence others. So there is a small change, small modification of uh, uh, relations between people. For example, if you uh, there in, in, uh, in the uh, 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 talk, uh, like uh, language of uh, internet, emojis. So there are images of uh, various emotions and various states of mind. But I'm always like wondering uh, what's in between. Uh, are there hues? Are there um, uh, moods uh, which do not have their own words, but should be expressed? Because what is something between sorrow and joy? If joy and sorrow is uh, on two extremes, what is in between? And what are the moods and emotions that are not expressed? And that uh, war, uh, states of mind uh, which do not have their own terms, do not, do not, do not exist in dictionaries. So I try to uh, express it in, in my writing, in my prose. And uh, I used to write uh, poetry, but I stopped. And I found out that uh, prose is for me more, um, uh, how to say, there is more space for what I want to express. So that's it. Nice, yeah. nice. You're also uh, an accomplished and prolific translator, as we've just mm -hmm. heard. How does that sort of fit in, 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 into that picture, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, translation as, uh, as such? Well, um, in secondary school, uh, I, uh, uh, I started uh, um, teaching myself languages, like mm. I, I uh, studied some Russian at, uh, at Lycée, at secondary school, some English, but uh, my mother also uh, is a French language teacher and uh, she had a lot of uh, book written in French and in Latin. So I started uh, learning languages, like uh, being interested in it. And uh, for me, it was, uh, uh, I was born in Bihać, in a small town in northwestern Bosnia. And uh, for me, it was a way to, to travel without traveling. So <laughs> traveling inside my, inside my mind and uh, opening windows to, to other cultures. And uh, that was my way. I remember uh, one book, I don't... Uh, uh, appreciate too much the author, but the book was really fine. 
it's uh, the, the, the original uh, French title is Terre Patrie, it's like uh, the earth, uh, like homeland. Uh, it's written by a French soci sociologist, uh, Edgar Morin. And uh, it's about the connection between people, like every nation, every individual is, is connected uh, to, to another in the whole, whole world. And by cuisine, by, I don't know, uh, languages, by cultural traits, uh, by genetics. And uh, uh, these frontiers that, be, that exist between, between uh, countries and nations, they are also a uh, kind, of, kind of illusion. Uh, so I started to, uh, to translate and uh, first from French and uh, uh, then some English, but not a lot, and Spanish. Uh, and then I stopped in uh, maybe it was uh, at the beginning of 2000s, 2000. Uh, I was, uh, I, I, I used to write poetry and I was looking for my voice in prose. And I felt that uh, translation is like uh, stopping me to have this flow in expression uh, when I write prose, when I write prose sentences. So I only uh, used to translate some law documents from French because I'm also court translator. But I avoided, I, w I, I, was, I was avoiding to, to translate literary prose or poetry or, because I thought, okay, it will destroy my own voice. I was looking for it. But when I, uh, when I built it in myself, uh, it, uh, it stopped to be an obstacle. So I returned. I just started again to, to, to translate uh, literature and uh, prose. It's yeah. really, really yeah. interesting. Yeah. You know, but I, I, I just translate. I, I don't write, as you know. Yeah. And it's kind of other way about, you know. I love the chains of translation, you know, the, the constraints. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when I get up in the morning and start to work, you know, I, I pick up a work of art sure. it's and work off it. Yeah. And you pick yeah. up a blank page and, you know, what the hell do I put in there? You it's know, a, it's a very good way to, uh, like, uh, uh, some, I know, psychotherapists, they, they recommend uh, meditation. But translation, literary translation is a very good way to uh, refocus your mind because you have to focus on every particular word and think about it very, very concentrated. But you have a schema, schema which is very well developed. The novel in its uh, original is already done. Exactly, so you, you don't have to worry about to, motivation, yes, about, about psychology, end, about, about many things, just yeah. pure language and culture. Sure, sure. But, uh, uh, <clears throat> but if you do a translation in uh, like uh, six months, a year, sometimes if you write if I write, yeah. it's like all the time you hear this voice of of a uh, of the author, of, a, of, of an author yeah. who is uh, mature, who is, for example, Nobel Prize winner, and uh, it can be like a shadow all the time. And uh, uh, if you don't have your voice developed, but I, I won't say that I have my own voice. I have more voices. I cannot say that I have a particular voice uh, when I when I express myself in in in, in novels, in my novels. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Well, uh, speaking of translation, why not hear this bit in English, Melissa? Will you? Okay, so you That's had so uh, this uh, part of the text in uh, Bosnian, yeah. in the original, and I'll read it for you in English. The morning's nights filled with sleeplessness. He'd sprawl out on the bed, and just when uh, when was about to part ways with wakefulness, he'd start to awake with a brief and sudden inhalation. He would instantly revert to a state of purest alertness. Sleep would then overcome him again and again, he'd startle. I asked him to do the gasp in front of me. The sound had certain points of similarity with a soft hmm that people utter when they remember they'd forgotten to bring something important. He'd catch some sleep only before morning when trams start to clutter and the roads are overrun with revving cars stuck in the gridlock. He watched a documentary about mites once. After that, he, um, sorry, after that, the moment uh, 
he went to bed, he'd find himself able to get the tiny vermin out of his head. He was beset by the thought that they were frantically multiplying in his pillow. Terror would come over him. They'd be rushing towards him in their billions, their mass last, uh, rusting curdled in the blood in his veins. They fell into military formations commanded by much larger supreme mites able to speak and monger war. As a defensive measure, he'd layer, layer a few clean pillowcases on his pillow. Otherwise, he wouldn't get a wink of sleep. At the shop, carrying organic food and medicinal herbs, he supplied himself with bags of lavender and lined them up on his nightstand. Before he went to sleep, he'd squeeze them with his fingers to release the aroma. That helped. He slept better, though nowhere near as well as before, in times when he was dragged out of his afternoon doze by smell of the sweets that Livia bought on her way home from work at the most wanted sweet shop in the city. But she disappeared from his life, and his ship, in spite of the lavender, ventured into even narrower and shadier straits. As the date of the cat's demise faded in the past, his insomnia did improve. Yet, there are a million ways for a man to be unwell, which is why constant struggle is recommended. But he let things slide. With all the unwashed dishes, his, si his sink could go neck and neck with the laboratory of a microbiologist who'd lost both financial back backing and his mind. The smell of rice boiled with butter and vegeta spice blend permit permitted his plat. It smelled of burnt food as well. Sometimes, sitting on the sofa, he'd hug his legs in the middle of a conversation and stick his head between his knees. Seems I've got an alien here, would go through my mind, one that could revert to his former form any minute now, become a great big egg invested with a suit of stone mail. He confided to me that of late, after he'd wake up, he'd lie for a quarter of an hour on his back with his eyes shut and an erection. In those moments, certain systems in his brain would fail and he wouldn't be able to resist the desire to fantasize about cradling a Kalashnikov. White void all around him, ingratating itself with him. And he stands in a cramped posture, impossible in reality because of the gravity and muscle strain. He pulls the cocking handle and chambers around. A wave of bliss washes over him. He cocks the already cocked rifle over and over again, which can be done only in fantasy. He does it many times over, listening with his inner ear the clicks of the implement of death. The rifle becomes tense, rounds of piling up at the mouth, the barrel, and he feels more and more powerful because of the immeasurable potential energy accumulating in the weapon. In its mature phase, this process would continue in autopilot mode. The thoughts of cocking the gun would arrive of themselves. Duke cited the example of a CD player reading a single musical sequence from a scratchy CD, a common occurrence at the local radio stations in those days. A skipping CD is one thing, he corrected himself. The cocking of the gun, quite another. The cocking is pure power, sex. A few seconds of silence and a quip. Why are, star why are staring at me like that, my blue-eyed lad? Would you like some, huh? So, this is from your latest novel, See You at X, right? Vidimos se X. Which, unfortunately, yeah, it's not out yet. It was supposed to be published, what, three months ago or so, yeah. yeah? And then, you know, COVID and everything, things are complicated. And so now we, we, we unfortunately don't have, don't have any copies here. So, but, but can you tell us about the book? And about this, this particular, you know, excerpt? Mm -hmm. 
uh, yeah, the book is uh, set in uh, uh, po post-war Sarajevo in t to 1990s and 2000. And uh, uh, it's about uh, two friends. Uh, uh, the first one, the narrator, is uh, a guy who is uh, um, uh, like he studied physics and he's a professor at secondary school. And a friend of his, the, the other, the, the second protagonist, is a um, journalist and a guy who uh, uh, was, uh, was a soldier during the war and has his own uh, experiences and uh, traumas. I don't like this word, trauma. In German it means dream. Yeah, yeah, am I right? No, so no, no, no. You're kind of close. They sound it? similar. Okay. Calm and trauma, but, uh, but so it is, yet. it is a, a too uh, overused word. It's uh, like, right. uh, like PTSD, like post-traumatic stress disorder. It's uh, like uh, one of these words that you use, like these emojis you use, uh, like an ideogram, like a pictogram for, uh, for. Um, uh, for a state of mind, for a mood, for a, like uh, psychological experiences, which have very have, a, have a, has a very large spectrum of of uh, experiences of hues, and um, <clears throat> so this guy was uh, he's also a ref he was a refugee he was uh, displaced from from his uh, hometown to another town in Bosnia, and uh, so they met in Sarajevo and they have like uh, frictions between them. Not only like because of their experiences, because this the first guy, the professor, he he was not a soldier. He was uh, under under siege in Sarajevo, but he uh, he didn't participate in, in 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 the battles. He was just an ordinary soldier. The other guy had a really a very very difficult, uh, strong emotionally strong experiences from his uh, military unit. So there is a play of uh, jealousy between them. Like the one, the first one, he's a jealous because he didn't have this experience. He didn't have this experience. And the second one, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's envious about this uh, professor, this, his friend, because of his uh, like uh, playful uh, way of uh, living the life. And he's like uh, uh, craving to be like him. And there's this uh, polarization all the time. Um, so uh, uh, they're like uh, like like twins, in a way, and uh, it's maybe a story about one person divided in two, in two friends. Um, it's also a, I don't know it's like a chronic chronicle of uh, of uh, of a life in Sarajevo. I would like to see it like that. Um, I I used to read some. Uh, chroniclers, chronicles, chronicles, like, right, yes, writers from from Mexico, from Spain, from United States, and I like to uh, like describe uh, the everyday life uh, without trying to uh, create a very rigid uh, narrative, uh, just to leave it uh, the life to develop, to goes on, to go on. Um, so this is maybe the the the, the very rough uh, description of of it, but there are also topics that are uh, uh, that are developed, but which are also uh, present in my uh, in other in novels. Other books, it's uh, yeah. uh, the, the 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 contradiction, or I don't know how to say um, uh, the opposition which exists between uh, sciences like natural sciences on one side. And a spiritual mind and religion on the others on the other side. So when I when I talk about sciences, I think about I think of uh, biology, physics, astronomy. So exact science, not about not of uh, I don't know like sociology, history, or uh, humanities. Yeah. And I think there is a, yeah. yeah there is a like. <laughs> what do no, you okay. mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, uh, but uh, there is something like uh, this um, uh, battle, which is uh, what is more important, like a religious uh, way of uh, thinking, of seeing the world, or everything is like facts, science, yeah, so rough science, hard science, 
uh, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not a religious person. Uh, but also I have a respect for people who are religious. But uh, uh, I have many questions about it. It's, a, it's an uh, investigation that's, uh, that, which is not finished. It's like I try to, to, to understand these two points of view. Yeah, but those are, those are not the only tensions that, that run through the novel. You know, no, as a good course, Marxist, you know, I had to, I, I, I mean, Lee caught that there's a layer of, you know, like class uh, tension between the, the narrator sure. and, and his friend, because sure. you know, the narrator, he avoided like combat duty because his parents were influential and they sure. sort of, you know, they paid the right people or whatever, and they, they moved him out of harm's way, and this other guy, you know, he had to go to the trenches and yeah. do the killing. You know? yeah. <laughs> and throughout the novel, you know, they, they sort of jab each other, sure. you know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy for you, you've got money, uh, it's easy for you, you've got experience, you know, yeah. you, you've, you've lived, you've yeah. seen things, you've, yeah. you've yeah. done things. Everybody you know? wants yeah. what the other one has. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, I don't... Uh, I know which 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 side which side to pick there, because I don't think that uh, I have I can understand people who do not want to participate in combats in war in yeah. military units, uh, but in in one hand in in in, uh, uh, in one sense uh, there are situations uh, like crisis situations very difficult situations when you just have to defend and you have to participate yeah. and um, I don't know I have friends uh, who participate in, uh, in, in, in during the war they were like uh, war, warriors maybe it's, it's an exaggerated word, word but also who didn't who just uh, run away yeah so I I don't know I don't feel hatred uh, toward anybody it's like it's your own choice but I like for people to be sincere. Yeah. So if you just run away, you have to sincere to, to be sincere to say I just didn't want to do that. Just don't make myth about it. And uh, so that's it. I don't know. Right. Uh, in addition to fiction and, and everything, you also write quite a lot of essays. No. Write quite a lot of that stuff, and you. How does that sort of tie in with your with your fiction work and, and, and uh, how it's, do you uh, strike um, the balance? Uh, <clears throat> I have I, I, uh, maybe it's too maybe it's too arrogant arrogant from my uh, position to say like that, but I have a problem with uh, uh, with uh, uh, Slavic and ex-Yugoslav literary and cultural mm -hmm. tradition, or in a narrow way maybe with Bosnian and Herzegovinian. Uh, cultural and uh, literary tradition. <laughs> I have really, yeah. I have deep problem with it. Maybe it's my, it's my own problem. <coughs> so. mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the framework, the framework of ideas, uh, which was uh, built during, I don't know, the history of literature of Bosnia, is, was not enough for me. Was not sufficient. So uh, also le learning languages and. Uh, reading in French or in Spanish or in English some, uh, I was like broadening my uh, right. interest, my curiosity. And reading books I, did, I was not able to read in, in my uh, mother tongue. And, uh, uh, but also I, didn't, I, I couldn't find uh, texts and essays in my own language, be it uh, Serbian, Croatian, Bosnian, Montenegrin, it's my own language with different names. Uh, I was not able to find texts and essays which would be like a boost, booster from what I write. And also it was a problem for me in interviews and in my presentation to explain uh, what is the uh, well, well of thoughts, what is the forest of ideas of thoughts uh, where my uh, novels come from. So I tried to explain it in my essay, essays, mm -hmm. without uh, uh, trying to, to propose a particular ideology. Just, uh, I don't know, there is a phenomenon in a society 
uh, which sounds interesting for me, and I write an essay about it. For example, we were we talked today about uh, about an author, about many authors in ex uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, I read in in their interviews uh, some authors who uh, who declare them themselves as leftists, and they say that the literature is. Um, is a, a foundation for national identity. And for me, it's a, a, a strong uh, formu formulation, like uh, wording for something uh, which is much, much more uh, basic, like writing, writing uh, prose, writing poetry. And uh, I come from a country uh, which is a multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious, uh, so what does it mean for, for me, for example? I don't, I don't want, I, I, I've never written a single sentence uh, to build a uh, national identity. Yeah, whose identity yeah, are you who's, supposed yeah, to yeah, be yeah, building? I, I, just, exactly. I don't write for that. But also there is a question for me, uh, why, uh, why, why do I write at all? So it's like uh, this centipede uh, counting its own legs. Uh, I, I, just, I just sit down and write. It's like breathing. I just write. I feel it. I, like not, sometimes it's difficult, of course, to find. I have idea, for example, to express uh, some events, some dialogues, uh, but I'm not able to find a particular ambience, particular uh, uh, atmosphere, ambience to, mm, to express. Setting. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it takes me, I don't know, days to find it to to or maybe months, just you have to leave it to, uh, to leave it to settle down and uh, to try again, to try again, to try again. And, uh, but I never had this, uh, this like um, idea, like I'm, I'm, I'm participate, I, I'm participating in building nation, national identity. So write an essay about it. And uh, it's an essay not uh, uh, much about literature as about uh, art uh, in general. And I, I'm, I, I'm very curious uh, uh, about, uh, uh, about prehistory and I like to read about it, about uh, cave art, about how uh, people, I don't know, prehistory lived, what was the life of, of them, how it... Uh, and we know very, very, very uh, little, little about, about it. And the archaeology has been developing, especially in the last maybe uh, three, f uh, three, four decades. And there are many, many interesting information about Neanderthals, about Cro-Magnons, etc., etc. But it is totally ignored in uh, national literatures. It's like uh, there is only history. Uh, the, the most important thing is... Uh, what happened in the last uh, uh, few centuries. But ha what happened in thousands and thousands of years of prehistory is like ignored. It's yeah, that under doesn't enter into it's, your identity. Yes, it's totally you know, underestimated. Your, your People say, okay, there is, there is, I don't know, there is Tsarnyansky, there is, there is Krleža, there is, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Ivo Andrić, there is Mesha Selimović. But what about uh, cave artists? What about uh, Neanderthals in this context? Does it mean anything? Yeah, whose identity is, were they yeah. building? <laughs> because they, they created, yes, they, they created art, cave art. For example, there is a cave uh, which was discovered in, in, in France um, in the 90s during, during the war in Bosnia. It's uh, named uh, um, um, uh, Chauvet uh -huh. because the, one of the finder was, um, his last name was Chauvet. And uh, I, I recommend you, you can find it on website, there is a website dedicated to this, this cave and there are really amazing cave paintings uh, which are made in a, such a um, uh, marvelous way. So you can, just cannot imagine that people uh, 30,000 years ago uh, could uh, develop such uh, uh, subtle techniques to express a uh, visual world. And uh, so you, I, I wonder myself, so what was this? D did they um, picture it uh, because they want to build national identity? <laughs> there is something much, much more basic in, in uh, 
in an in, in individual, in a human being, uh, to, 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 uh, uh, to, to create something, an artistic artifact, uh, to write, to, to, to paint, to, to dance. Uh, Brilliant. So, that's my, Do you publish, my point, yeah. You publish most of your non-fiction at a, at a web portal called, what, Nomad? Nomad, yeah. Nomad.ba. Yeah. Uh, conveniently, well, well, because, you know, this, our, our, our project, you know, sort of has a, one, one, one of our focal points is, is the idea of nomadism and fixity, and it's, it's a huge debate. It, 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 it's been an interesting topic in, 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 in this country for, for decades, for 50, 60 years, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, how does, would you describe yourself as a nomad or, or a settled person? And how did that sort of affect your writing Maybe now, politics? Uh, and thinking about these uh, last uh, 20 years, I'm more settled, but maybe yeah. against my own will. I, maybe if my economic situation, I don't know, could afford me more traveling, I would travel more. Uh, but maybe I'm like, sedentary uh, physically but inside my mind I <laughs> yeah, know, know my travel, all the yeah. time I'm <laughs> just uh, all the time I travel I think okay. about the world not only about Bosnia of course yeah. I think about Bosnia of no course. No visas needed. <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, uh, in Bihać in the town where I was born now there is this uh, like uh, uh, migrant crisis so-called migrant crisis or people in the move uh, there is also politically correct expression uh, and uh, people, they call it crisis. They call it crisis because there are frontiers between states. But uh, uh, like just to come back to the, to the position of prehistoric peoples, they were more or less, they were very nomadic and they used to uh, tribes and uh, like small groups of prehistoric people, they just moved from one place to, to another. And they didn't have national states, they didn't have particular villages, maybe some villages, but it, 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 it was changing all the time. And uh, so I think uh, maybe it's, uh, it's too radical to say, but I think the position of migrants uh, in, in, in Bosnia, it's, it's more natural than to be uh, sedentary. It's more natural for people to move to travel, to go from one place to another place, yeah. Um, That's so, how civilization came about, right? Of course, every civilization. So you can, we can find it in our blood, so-called, yeah. yeah in, in our genetics. genetics. Everybody comes from somewhere. It's, uh, no one is just, I don't know, has lived only in one place. It's impossible. We can see it also in traits of our languages. Mm -hmm. Every language is a mixture, is a combination of various other idioms, languages, tongues, dialects. So it's present everywhere. And um, I don't know, writing for Nomad, it's, I, I used, to write, uh, used to write essays before also, but um, uh, writing for Nomad, it's just, uh, uh, it f uh, forces me to write more. It's like to, every month to, to find a, a topic which is interesting uh, and uh, sometimes it's there there is more politics sometimes mm. there is more literature culture um, i don't i just don't like i don't like politics yeah. but i'm uh, in bosnia we are overwhelmed with politics yeah, we are overwhelmed you just cannot avoid it and the last uh, maybe three two three uh, essays i wrote uh, for nomad uh, they were more like impregnated with 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 politics which i didn't like but uh, uh, the situation is so bad, so it just uh, yeah. uh, pushes me to, to investigate in that direction. I did um, like them, they were really good. Huh? <laughs> I did like them, they were, they were really oh, good. Okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, know, you mentioned huh? the economics of literature. <laughs> in, go on, yeah, go on! <laughs> yeah. You think of uh, Bosnia or in general? Both. Yeah. Both. It's <laughs> where's the difference? <laughs> well, yeah. a bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know uh, whether there are writers in in ex Yugoslavia who can 
survive by just uh, writing, publish, publishing and gaining money. Uh, I think only yeah. Milan Koyerbovic probably. Yeah, I'm, I'm well, not sure. Well, he yeah. writes for the newspapers yeah, a lot, yeah. you know, even yeah. Milan Koyerbovic. I just think of pure, pure yeah. writing, like publishing literature and uh, uh, m like living, like make living of out of mm. publishing. Well, I'm true. not sure. Uh, so, and if I think it's uh, also difficult in France or in where there are much, uh, much waves for, ways for writers to, to survive. And the, the state, there is also the state which aids, helps people to, 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 to survive as writers. But uh, in Bosnia, it doesn't exist. Mm. So we don't have a, a Ministry of Culture at the level of, of the state. At the state level, yeah. yeah so everything, we are totally like left to our own devices. Yeah, but every village has a culture minister. Yeah, every and but for only, like only for, vill for for <laughs> villages. Yeah, and like uh, two or three culture ministers can read and write. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, I'm exaggerating slightly. So, uh, so we have to 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 manage to to, to survive. Some I just I do uh, law translation translations. I write also for Nomad maybe. It's also a source, but of course I would like only to, to write prose. Yeah. That's my ideal, which is not possible. So I find other ways, uh, writing journalistic texts, uh, and uh, yeah, it's course, uh, it yes, the case of uh, every, every writer poet I know. Uh, most no of them one complain lives just, that, huh? that, 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 that it drains them of their creative energies. You know, you seem to be fine with that. No, it's uh, just a way to make money. And it, what do you do? I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just I, when the, when there is, the, for example, uh, uh, Louis Armstrong, who was a, who was a trumpetist, yeah. a jazz uh, trumpetist, the famous one, who uh, taught himself how to play trumpet. Um, uh, he had to 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 play every day, so I don't know two three hours a day just to have this uh, strength of muscles, and I think it's the same case for 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 writing literature and prose. You just have to practice every day. You have to practice it. Just, yes, and uh, if you don't have time for it, it's uh, uh, I don't know. You can uh, like cheating yourself like. Thinking like, oh, can I can do it? I can do it. And maybe, may, maybe there is a way. Maybe there is, a, there is, I don't know, uh, some magic. But uh, I think the everyday practice is very important. I agree. Yeah. It's Just true among thing. among among dancers, among musicians, and but maybe among writers, uh, you cannot see it at first sight. You know, when, when you when you see for a dance dancer a dancer who who does not practice every day or a month and he starts to dance, you can see it. You can see the difference, uh, yes. yeah, yeah. But for a writer, it's, uh, it's different. It's like uh, when you, uh, for example, you see a musician, even you are not uh, a music specialist, uh, you can feel it like someone, when someone doesn't know to play or, or he or she didn't practice music. But uh, poetry, prose, there is a gray, gray area. Uh, yeah, you it's can... called postmodernism. It's yeah, very yeah, subjective, yeah. what you yeah, like. It's very, uh, this is no rubbish, this is postmodern. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I think there is also this, post -post uh, this, this part which is uh, very important. It's, uh, uh, I call it, uh, maybe there is an expression for it, it's literary concentration, literary focus. Mm -hmm. I think it was, it was much, much stronger among the writers 100 years ago. Yeah. And people, they didn't use to watch TV, they were not distracted by internet, Netflix. by many, many other distractors, Netflix, watching movies, they read a lot. And uh, also uh, ordinary people and middle class people read more. And uh, so I think for them it was much easier also to, 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 uh, to write very like buoyant fra phrases, sentences. Uh, and you can see like uh, many books uh, that's been written in the last maybe five years. Uh, but you can count this time, for example, from the beginning of the web uh, 2.0, mm -hmm. like when smartphones and books are more and more uh, 
thinner, thinner, thinner and thinner. Mm. And uh, also the, the structure of, of syntaxes is simpler and simpler. Mm. Yeah. Of course, there are exceptions. There are writers who tend to be more expressive, more Lavish. like, uh, yes, uh, complex. And, but in general, in the average, it's like, uh, I don't know, I have that sense that, uh, that the quality of literature is uh, heading toward uh, um, mediocrity. Yeah. If we're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that pe people that just, uh, 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 the explanation is I just don't have enough time uh, uh, to read. And you, and you ask, for example, this pers person, how do, you how do you spend your spare time? And uh, yes, like watching uh, Netflix movies or bin bin uh, binge watching. And, binge watching more. And so you have, you have spare time. You can find 30 minutes, one minute. But the problem is with this, this destruction of focus. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, internet and smartphones uh, uh, are doing it systematically. And so it's very difficult to, to, to refuse it, to, to find focus, to find concentration. Be because you have all the time this... Uh, okay, the metaphor is banal. You have this like uh, bunch of uh, cocaine on your table, and you have if you're a, a drug addict, you have all the time you have to refuse it because you have your smartphone on the table, and you have this. Uh, uh, we are all like smart smartphone addicts, mm -hmm. and you have to. F we have all the time. We have to fight for our own own, own focus, and uh, book, books are like that, and especially good literature fine literature um, wants people to be concentrated and focused. Yeah. You have to, uh, uh, to, to fall into this reader's flow. Like, and it takes you maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes to go inside, to, to go into inside, inside the, 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 the story of the book, the, the mind of, 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 um, of protagonists. You cannot do it if you all the time you are distracted with. Yeah. Uh, at least it's, it's my case. It's my case, and uh, also I read some some books about this problem of focus, and there are many many uh, scientific studies about that, which confirm this this problem, which is huge, which is really, and many people are just not aware of it. Mm. They just think, okay, smartphones. It's like thirty years ago it was TV. Now it's smartphones. Uh, just Times go fly by and that's it. Um. Nice. So uh, this is it to, to wrap up and well let's let's hear something from, from one of your previous novels in German this time, not in my translation, in Marsha Dabit's translation. And then if you don't mind we will we will have a little QA if you have questions. Right. So this is from the book that you have there, yeah. Travjek is Podruma. So it's an Ausschnitt, den ich jetzt lese. Die erzählende Protagonistin heißt Rehana. In Richtung Westen, unweit von Zeravatschko Polje, fließt Klokot, von dem die einen behaupten, es sei ein Bach, und die anderen, es handle sich um einen Fluss. Entlang von Klokot erstrecken sich Felder. Eine verzauberte Gegend mit Störchen im Segengras. Diese Gegend zwang sie, an die ältesten Zeiten zurückzudenken, an den Bruder. Wenn sie sich hier befand, war sie geneigt, ihm zuzustimmen, dass der Kessel von Bichac in Wahrheit durch einen Meteoriteneinschlag von einer Million Jahren entstanden war. Nedjad hofft, eines Tages würde ein Bruchstück des Himmelkörpers gefunden werden, womit seine Theorie bewiesen wäre. Noch galt es jedoch, darauf zu warten. Dennoch betrachtete man von diesen Wiesen aus die Berge und die Plateaus am Fuße des Gebirgszugs Pleschewitza. Erhielt man eine verdrehte Perspektive und es sah tatsächlich so aus, als wäre die Stadt in einem Krater entstanden, den ein glühender Ball aus dem Weltraum gegraben hatte. In der Gegend rund um Klokot schlängelten sich unterschiedliche Wege und so konnte sie jedes Mal eine neue Joggingroute für sich planen, 
Die Auswahl an Routen wurde größer, wenn sie die umliegenden Hügel mit einbezog, wobei sie stets darauf achtete, der Kapelle nicht so nahe zu kommen. Da die möglichen Strecken so vielfältig waren, vergingen die 40 Minuten Schwitzen wie im Nu. Offenbar eignete sich die Gegend sehr gut als Erholungsgebiet, dennoch stieß sie so gut wie nie auf andere Jogger. Die einzigen Menschen, die sie an jenem Tag bei Jogging sah, waren zwei Männer auf, den, auf der anderen Seite von Klokot. Sie waren dabei, eine Kuh zu retten. Offenbar war das Tier am steilen Abhang von etwa zwei bis drei Meter Höhe ausgerutscht. Die Kuh lag reglos da, halb im Wasser, halb im Schlamm. Ab und zu mute sie, aber es klang geradezu desinteressiert. Die Männer banden sie mit dicken Seilen fest, die sie am Traktor befestigten. Sie machten sich daran, die Kuh auf das Feld zu ziehen. Einer von den beiden schob sie von unten an und lenkte sie in die richtige Richtung. Er trug Fischerstiefel und war am ganzen Körper von Schlamm bedeckt. Rehana konnte dieses Leid nicht länger mit ansehen und lief weiter. In derselben Nacht wurde sie von einem so durchdringenden Geheul geweckt, dass sie erschrocken aus dem Bett aufsprang. Es klang wie Wikingerhorn, Didgeridoo oder Schiffssirene zusammen. Die Wände vibrierten und es schien, als wäre das Gebäude kurz davor, in die Luft zu fliegen. Einige Augenblicke später ließ das Geräusch ein wenig nach, aber es durchdrang weiterhin die Stille, in der die Siedlung zuvor versunken war. Die erste Angst verflog und Rehana setzte sich an den Bettrand. Sie legte ihre Handflächen auf die nackten Knie, bis sie von Schweiß rutschig wurden. Mit einem Geräusch wie von Ozeanwellen ging das Sirenengeheul schließlich zu Ende. Rehana konnte jedoch nicht mehr einschlafen. Das Betttuch war zerknittert, die Falten waren hart und an manchen Stellen so heiß geworden, dass sie sich schmerzhaft in ihrem Bauch bohrten. Mit Zigarette und Feuerzeug ausgestattet, ging sie auf den Balkon hinaus. Die Wäsche war nicht mehr da, in wenigen Stunden war alles getrocknet und noch vor dem Abendessen abgenommen. Rehana war überrascht, als sie eine dunkle Gestalt erblickte, ihre Mutter im Nachthemd. Eine Stimme, in der ein Lächeln mitschwang, fragte die Tochter. Die hat es auch aufgeweckt. Rehana blies nur den Rauch aus. Irgendwo muss ein WC-Spülkasten kaputt geworden sein, setzte Schem sofort. Was soll es sonst sein? Bei dem Mann unten ist alles in der Wohnung kaputt. Ein verwahrloster, alleinstehender alter Mann. Er geht hundertmal in der Stunde aufs Klo, hat die Spülung betätigt und der Mechanismus war dahin. Ein kaputtes Ventil. Der Lärm kam nicht von unten, Mama, sondern von oben, tausendprozentig. Die weiße, aufrechte Ellipse namens Schemsa gab sich der Betrachtung der Umgebung hin. Rehana zündete sich eine Zigarette an. Die Luft war nicht so schwül wie am Nachmittag des Vortages und jeder Atemzug war gesättigt von Aroma der taub, taubenetzten Pflanzen von der Wiese und von den Blumen vor dem Wohnhäuser. Die Nacht war eingefärbt von blauen und grauen Farbschattierungen. Okay, thank you, people. Uh, any questions? Comments? Ste 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 Sure. Was <laughs> gern wir? Haruki Murakami. <laughs> so, no questions? No questions. Right then. Oh, yes. A little question, maybe a little bit naive. Um, but I, I found it very interesting what you said, for example, about the, the prehistoric artists and so on. And 
So there has to be something in, in certain humans that drive us to express some feelings into art or express anything into art. And it's clearly been there in, in prehistory. Yeah. Well, we, when we look at the humans nowadays, I mean, all, all of us around us, some, some still do that, like you, for example, all of you, <laughs> and some don't. So what do you think about that? Do you think there is some specific inhibition or maybe they weren't given space? Or do you think maybe some humans just simply don't have it or don't have means to express it? Do you think everybody has it inside since the prehistoric time? Or I, how would you... I, I think, you, I, think I, you think of every human, every human being. I'm thinking like, of humans in general. Yeah, I think that every human has, has uh, creative capabilities, yeah. If you dream, and everybody dreams, although you don't, uh, you don't remember your dreams, you dream. So it's a creative uh, process. So you are creative. So even you, you don't do it uh, purposefully. Uh, you do something, and uh, the the action of dream is a creative process. So I think uh, it's unavoidable. So if you don't, you don't do not practice it in a in a waking life so uh, it exists maybe in a, a teenage life it's a crossroads for many artists and maybe for musicians even earlier but in TJ, teenage life because of i don't know the brain is developing and the affinities are just trying to find uh, the the right direction um, uh, maybe that's the most the most important uh, 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 like the, the the part of your life the portion of your life when you try to find your artistic uh, but not not everybody should uh, 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 should have to be i don't know mozart or uh, borges or people can start to write uh, their 50s or 60s even, I don't know. There are also examples of good writers who, who started to publish and to write in their 40s, 50s and even after that. So <clears throat> it depends. But I think it's uh, uh, spread among everybody. Yes, every human, human being, that being has, has an affinity for, for art. They say um, that education kills the creativity. Do you uh, many, 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 <laughs> many things. Yeah, many things uh, kill kill creativity. Not only education. Education can also be uh, very stimulative for because you, in the school you can learn. For example, if you if you are uh, if you grew up in a uh, I don't know stifle asphyxiating family and you come to school which is. Uh, I don't know, school in Sweden, for example, it can open up your mind. It can uh, help you to find uh, a new world. And also, if you had stayed in your own family without knowing what, what, uh, what you can learn, so it's a good thing. But on the other hand, there is also, uh, for example, so socialistic, socialistic schools, I don't know, have many, many uh, objections uh, to the I way don't. we had... Uh, really? For the record, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, to the way how how I don't know uh, things were taught, and uh, I don't know, there were maybe difference between uh, professors, teachers, but the uh, the system, the way uh, I I didn't like it, I didn't like it, and I I didn't like especially how the uh, literature was taught and arts, and uh, it was always always uh, framed in this. Uh, and even now, it is called like a national group of 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 uh, sub subjects, yeah, like subjects, subjects, yeah. yeah. And so, literature, history, geography, and uh, uh, I think it should be thought uh, in a way that it should uh, broaden minds of people, not to now just to 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 teach young young people to be good uh, in our uh, now nowadays case to be good Bosniaks or Serbs or Croats, just to be good uh, and um, how to say rational uh, open-minded human beings it's more important maybe it's it's my naive point of view just elaborate on, on my little depending uh, yeah we were thought in, in, a, in a pretty conservative way in a highly structured way there wasn't all that much fun you know there, there was no room for Know, individual expression, right? 
but <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> how, how to compare this? No, no, you have one. Yeah, but, but, uh, but, but we want thought rubbish, you know. Kids these days have way too much fun at school. I mean, and, and they yeah. just... No, the but they, they just play with their mobile phones. Yeah, so and the that's things that's they that's learn... That's <laughs> the teacher. Yeah. That's yeah. the teacher, former teacher. <laughs> I, I'm not... Maybe it was, uh, as you said, maybe it was... Uh, better structured in, in socialism, in ex-Yugoslavia. This system, no, 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 educational system. The content system. was... was uh, it was... Uh, to the, me, the, to my mind, uh, the, the content the, was the, superior. Yeah, but the, the critic mind was, uh, was, uh, was not uh, developed. You know, these people from my generation, they're not like uh, thought to, uh, uh, to present their thoughts in groups and to, for example, to oppose they just in, in socialism. You just ha had to sit down and listen what the, what the teacher, what the professor says. Well, then there were there were exceptions. How, how did but, that country break yeah. up then? You know who yeah. fucked it up? If we all were just like you know. Well, okay, there are other, there are other, there are other ways. Kids in school yeah, are still yeah, not really yeah, taught to yeah. think, but to just yeah. repeat, okay, yeah, reproduce. Yeah, reproduce. You know, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. drilled into yeah. you know reproducing stuff that okay, yeah. this is how you should think. Unless yeah. the teacher does it himself. I remember my uh, 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 Russian teacher at secondary school, and when she uh, used uh, used to, to to enter the classroom, we had to stand up like soldiers, mm -hmm. and say like like soldiers, drastvite, or it was I don't know, it's dumb, it's, uh, it's it maybe just, that it's, will that's, help you to survive it just nowadays. Do, doesn't doesn't <laughs> boost your creative. <laughs> You just become I have a friend like who's a school soldier. teacher and he gets told to fuck off like regularly by his students, you know. I would rather have kids stand yeah. up for the teacher than, you know. Okay, <laughs> okay, not to a judge, but I had a very... very yeah, yeah, it was a per, like a performance. But I had also a very good yeah, teacher. Yeah, but that was, that was mandated. Yeah. We all did that, you know. And not just for, for, for the yeah. Russian teachers, you know, for all teachers, you know. <laughs> Oh, I did that to my kids. They had to get up oh, yeah. okay. when I yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Discipline. Then, yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> Was that 20 press-ups now? <laughs> <laughs> good. I don't know. I had but I, a very good uh, uh, um, professor, uh, teacher of mathematics. I had to say that uh, I had to this... Uh, I had this... To this um, it was called like... Uh, oriented secondary school uh -huh. and uh, at the beginning you had to choose your own uh, orientation and my orientation in education was mathematics and uh, uh, computer sciences and my teacher of mathematics he was really really good really fun and even you are even if you are like um, you get the worst uh, no note like uh, you like uh, you're joyful you're, he, he, ha he had his own way to uh, uh, when he's strict, when he's, uh, I don't know, he's not uh, um, like happy with your, uh, uh, with your lessons, with your uh, performance. performance, yeah. Uh, he just, he, he, know, he knew how to do it, how to uh, push people to, to learn and to, Vinch, maybe you remember, you don't know him. Okay, you still didn't, report, maybe, you, no. you're still not yeah. a mat mathematician, but all right. Who knows? Yeah, but yeah. I have some, I have so some affinities. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I ran away from, <laughs> ran away yeah. from. Yeah. You could have been a programmer, you know, yeah. like a <laughs> useful so member money. of society, yeah. and you are yeah. scribbling yeah. away. You know? <laughs> I stopped. Yeah. Well, anybody else? Um, no, ideas, no, questions? To add something to the idea because we were talking about the prehistoric uh, art, but there are also uh, cell phones and the new age now uh, that maybe uh, like a human creativity in general. And you can even, I think, expand this to uh, uh, animals. Like a, we have the example, uh, most famous is probably birds being creative beings as uh, ornamenting their nests. Sure, and also and dancing. Have, yeah, and yeah. We have yeah. Yeah. Singing. Singing. Yeah. Singing. Yeah. So, but uh, maybe when we talk about prehistoric art, we're talking more about people trying to express their reality in a different way. So for me, I see uh, two different kinds of creativity. One is one of 
that still exists in humans and smartphones and ornamenting yourself and kind of maybe simplifying the world to expressing yourself um, uh, which is becoming more and more prevalent and thus more simplistic as uh, compared to looking for meaning maybe you're um, mm. yeah. like self-presentation yeah. instead of really original ideas yeah, and creativity is self-presentation not original idea it could be if, if, if you really present yourself in an original, authentic way, but a lot of people present themselves so how they see it's popular to present yourself. But what is the book? Is this not a kind of... It is, it is. Like a, this presentation, is, uh, self presentation of your mind. Mm. Of your... Yeah, Which is interesting. In this cave in Chauvet in France, uh, I was talking about, uh, um, there are not many, uh, I think maybe some, one, one figure which uh, reminds of a human and everything is animals and uh, like bison buffaloes mm. and uh, maybe bears uh, tigers and there are no portraits or anything related to it and it's very interesting because there are so many there are hundreds or maybe thousands pictures in this uh, in this cave and it's also a case with Altamira and Lascaux and others other caves it's also uh, it's interesting. There are why 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 they didn't uh, I don't know uh, represent themselves. I don't know. My father uh, is a hunter, and in his um, uh, cabin you have also just animals. You yeah. don't have a human portrait. It's like <laughs> fetishism. <laughs> you know, it would be kind of weird to have a kind of a guy. Uh, heads up! Heads up! Human beings. Last year, accidentally, and I just my, you know stopped his head. My head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it could be. Maybe that's the, expla that's the explanation. <laughs> I actually, if I may, I also have a more, more contemporary mm. question. It's about the, your writing voice that you described, that you found that, that you needed to leave the translation for and so on. Um, so, of course, you said also everything is, is uh, liquid, right? Everything is flowing, everything is changing. So what was the point for you when you knew you found it? So the point when you said, this, this is my voice, this is my unique thing. Uh, this is a good question. Because I told, uh, I said uh, uh, that I, I, I don't feel that I have, I have one voice. I feel that I have m many, or I don't know, two, three vo voices. And uh, it's... Uh, uh, it's something that you can feel this distinction when you write dialogues, when you, uh, when you, when you uh, uh, write uh, plain narration, like describing uh, events, it, this voice is more like you, you, you feel that you feel it. You just, there is, you, you have to find this so-called melody of expression. But in dialogues, you have to express the voice of, of other people. There are writers, for example, uh, uh, Javier Marias, uh, a Spanish uh, novelist, uh, who writes uh, dialogues uh, in a way that almost every um, uh, line is like written by, uh, it seems like it's written by the same person. Although those people, they talk about different things or they express different emotions. But this sentence, this melody of sentences is his, is his own. It's, uh, uh, but I try to... Um, I try to find in these dialogues um, the expression of, 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 of protagonists. And it's maybe it's the most difficult thing. Uh, and when you write this, you feel this distinction, you feel the, these, uh, from, when you switch from a narration to a dialogue, you feel that there is a, this voice, something like music of your syntaxis, uh, which is different. And, uh, but also in my dialogues, uh, you cannot do it perfectly. You cannot perfectly copy uh, uh, another person. It's impossible. It's, you cannot answer, no enter. Right? It's uh, it's impossible. And uh, even actors, they 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 remain actors. They are not that person they uh, they wanted to be. They can they can play it uh, amazingly, but it's it is it remains a movie. It remains a theater piece and. Uh, and you do not agree? 
No? <laughs> no, I do actually. Okay. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so <laughs> He's just thirsty. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> I just want yeah. the water, you know. Uh, for, me, uh, for example, problem, a problem with, I will not uh, uh, mention those writers. Uh, they are Boston writers, some are Croatian writers, Serbian writers. Uh, some of them are dead, they are classics. Some of them alive. Uh, but for me, the problem was uh, uh, very, very frequently the problem how the dialogues are developed and are expressed. And uh, uh, sometimes, and it's it's a sort of a, a tradition in many, many uh, Bosnian uh, pro prose literature. Uh, the, the the lines of dialogues are written in a. We call it gnoma. It's like ev almost every uh, line of the dialogue is written as a proverb, or like a private individual proverb. Every uh, every single uh, protagonist is wa wise and expresses him themselves in a in a precise and uh, 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 way full of wisdom. And uh, of course, if you socialize with people, you know that. Not everybody is like that. People have, uh, some people express themselves in a monologue. Some people have, like, uh, do not have very perfect sentences. Sometimes it's like imperfect. There are uh, verbs uh, which lack, which like, uh, other people like elliptic way. They just uh, say one word, two words, m many pauses. And uh, sometimes it's very, very difficult to catch it. And because in, 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 in prose, you just cannot catch everything. Because when you talk to, to, to someone, people have gestures, have uh, uh, facial expression, which is very complex. You just cannot express it in few few lines. And so you have to choose the way. You have to find a particular word in a line. And you just cannot transcript, for example, I express myself, and, you, and I transcript my own, uh, oral way of expression, you, you transcript it into, into, into paper. You can, you, you, uh, uh, it's, it, for me it's not a good way because you just lose all, you, all the, this body language and situational context which is lost, it doesn't exist in paper. So you have to find this uh, combination of, of everything and to have this compression to express it, to express uh, personality. Because you have uh, whole world, cosmos around you, and you want to express a story in 100, 200 pages. So it's all the time it's expression. If you write a book with, I don't know, 500 pages, it's all, all the time it's an expression, a compression of, 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 of the world, of reality. And dialogue is really, it's, a, it's a very tempting for every, every writer, prose writer too. And many of them avoid to write, for example, Mar uh, Marcus uh, was notoriously renowned for not writing or writing very, very uh, uh, rare dialogues. Some of them, but he avoided it all the time. He didn't like it, like them. So it depends. Uh, okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Shall we wrap but, up and go home? Yeah, I just want to say one last thing. Yeah, oh, to yeah. remind you that there are books there that you could go home with. Um, and we also have another two readings coming from two uh, writers, female writers from Bosnia and Herzegovina. So we have reading with Az uh, Selma Azotic on the main 21st, at uh, the same time, 7.30 here. And uh, Anita Pajevic comes on the March 26th. So... Um, we would like to see you again, tell your friends about this. Um, and yeah, hope to, that you liked uh, our artist talk and hope to see you again. Thank you for coming. And Thank you. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs>